Hello everyone, today I'm going to have a look at this festival that took place in 2021, last year, in Cairo, Egypt. And the event was called the Pharaoh's Golden Parade. And this was to do with moving some mummies from the Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, and it was a big celebration. The song here that I'm going to show you is called The Hymn to Isis. And so this is about the ancient Egyptian goddess Isis. And the re one of the reasons I want to point this out today is obviously not to glorify it. You know, it's, it's about the false goddess figure, which, of course, goes back to Babylon with Semiramis. You've got Diana in Rome. This mother goddess figure has been consistently under different names and guises through different cultures throughout history. And that's one of the reasons I want to show this to you today, to show the reality of that's what they worshipped and that's what they're essentially worshipping in this clip. But also that when it comes down to it, and this is a very simple point, but very important to remember, this is about a kingdom, right? Remember in the book of Daniel when you had the statue with the different empires and the last one on the feet in which Jesus is the one, prophetically, who destroys these kingdoms of man throughout the ages, culminating in what many believe is a revived Roman Empire, Rome 2.0. But remember, when you see all of these celebrities doing these ancient Egyptian symbols, and they are just the same as that you see in Rome, in the Roman Catholic Church, and the, and the Jesuits, and the symbolism they use of the pyramids and the eyes and these all the celebrities paying homage to this Egyptian, Babylonian, Grecian empires and Rome being the extension of that. So what you see in Rome is exactly the same hearkening back to those symbols to those empires. And what you see the celebrities to, because many people get very caught up on individual celebrities and it's certainly good to expose that that's what celebrities do but we have to remember this is about a kingdom it's not about individual celebrities it's not about madonna doing this it's not about miley cyrus doing that they are representing a kingdom it's very very simple there are two different kingdoms there's the kingdom of true light and there's the kingdom of darkness there's the kingdom of truth and there's the kingdom of error there's the kingdom of god and there's the kingdom of Satan. There's the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Babylon. Spiritual light and darkness is, it always has been about this. The biblical term Israel represents the kingdom of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which we as Gentiles are grafted into through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whilst Babylon, on the other hand, is the kingdom of darkness and the devil, and by extension represents figures like Nimrod, Cain, and other Antichrist representatives. Uh, of course, the, the Freemasons and the secret societies, they revere people like Nimrod from Babylon. So the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness, we only have two choices. There is no more options than this. There are two choices, heaven and hell. This is what it all comes down to, Christ or Belial. If you want to be included in the kingdom of God, then you must come to God on his terms, through his way, which is believing upon the gift of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, receiving this grace through faith in him, abiding in the doctrine of the gospel. It's all about battles between the kingdoms, you know, that Jesus will return one day, like in the prophetic statue of the book of Daniel, and destroy them. So we are part of the kingdom of God if we're born again in Jesus Christ, but these are advocating for the kingdom of Antichrist, as I said, throughout the ages, that same mother-son false worship, the false goddess and Nimrod and Tammuz uh, and the Semiramis from Babylon, it's all the same thing echoing through the ages. It's very simple, really. You know, that there's nothing too complex 
Remember, the smoke and mirrors are, tr are designed to confuse people, but this is quite simply about that same kingdom that has worshipped these false gods and goddesses throughout history. And, and remember, Paul himself went to uh, Corinth and places where there were temples of Diana and Artemis. And, you know, it's the same thing. So I'm going to show you this to you today. And this is quite disturbing. This is a hymn to Isis um, that this lady is singing here in Cairo. May the gods adore the mistress Isis. And look at the symbolism in the top left there. You've got that same sun disk with the wings and the um, pyramid with the eye of Ra and the sun god. And this is all part of that same thing of which Rome is an extension of. And that's what we're dealing with here. May the gods adore the mistress Isis. And this is, takes place in a minute, you'll see, in front of a temple. So Isis, same... Same mother goddess, it's she who gave birth to the morning. You know, there's all these elite men sitting there watching this. The mistress of the West, the netherworld. And of course, we know the netherworld is referring to the underworld. The spiritual world exists, folks. You know, the Bible covers all of these things. And to correctly understand these things, we need to look at the Bible, of what the Bible, you know, how God... It, speaks against the sins of Egypt uh, and Sodom and Babylon and these empires that rose up of darkness throughout the millennia. So this is what they worship. I mean, you've got the theosophists like Helena Blavatsky and Alice A. Bailey who essentially worship the same thing, you know. And this is what we're up against. Remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, it's against principalities and powers as the bible says so we're, we're in these this temple here uh, which you'll see in a second just hearkening back to that same old thing you see there the, these um these women come in dressed like that and and you'll see it even in the book of corinthians you know paul said certain things to the church, instructions to the church, the women wearing short hair and things, because that's what they were doing. They were temple prostitutes. In Corinth, if you go there today, it's the same. You can still see on the top of a cliff where the temple stood that the prostitutes were part of, and then you had Corinth down on the bottom of the cliff with the new church that Paul was forming. So you had all these cultural conflicts. It was a lot more intense back then, you know. We, we, at the moment, we, well, it's getting worse, but we haven't really experienced the same thing. Okay, so then we go to this, what's, Egyptian museum, and you see that these women are dancing, and they look very much like that, and you see there the, the men uh, in higher places that are sitting watching this, in this auditorium. But yeah, you see these women, how they're part of the temple, the temple ritual and dancing and... So it's talking about an awe to Isis, the mistress of the West. In front of the pyramids. I mean, it's just right in front of your face, isn't it? Not hidden at all. There you go, the temple, you see the temple with the, the women. And that staircase there. That staircase, which is, is kind of like a, the shape of a pyramid anyway, and, and the illumination on top, you see the light on top. This is the same thing, you know, there's there's nothing new under the sun. And when we're dealing with the, the Rome stuff and why, you know, why do they have, why do Rome have the all-seeing eye and the pyramid in some of their artwork and depictions, the hat of one of the Vatican workers that we saw, he has the all-seeing eye on his hat. Why do they show all these things? Because it's the same thing, it's an extension of the same religion and we're dealing with kingdoms. We're dealing with kingdoms. These are ambassadors for the enemy's kingdom, for the Antichrist's kingdom. 
this whole thing, this whole symbolism. And this, you know, the first big one was Nimrod in Babylon. And there's been many typologies of that Antichrist figure ever since throughout the ages. And we see in Rome today, as I said, it's the same extension. That's why you have the Egyptian symbolism and Babylonian symbolism in Rome. And the priesthood of it, it's the same theme. They are the same, they are the extension of the same kingdom. So there you go, that's what I wanted to show you today on this hymn to Isis. This is a battle between kingdoms. This is about kingdoms. And praise and thank the Lord Jesus Christ for all those who are in the kingdom of God through his gospel, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ as full payment for their sins. They are transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. What you're seeing here is part of the kingdom of darkness. It's that same system, that same pagan worship, which the Bible exposes beginning with Nimrod primarily and you've seen that same Babylonian system work in its way through false state religion throughout time. This is not about Egypt as a country, there's many wonderful people there today. Uh, this is about the symbolism and what that symbolism represents, the spirit behind that false religious system. We share the gospel to every creature in the vein and in the hope that souls will be snatched out of the kingdom of darkness, that they'll come to the kingdom of light, that they'll no longer be blinded by the God of this world who deceives people by smoke and mirrors and false religious worship, that they'll come away from that pagan worldly slavery and come to the full knowledge and salvation in Jesus Christ, citizens of heaven, and all praise and thanks to him that he will one day come back in the brightness of his coming and it will be destroyed forever. God bless you.